waiter who quoted Marx and Blake every time he served a course. If they introduced that method at my local cafe, you'd just get the bloke going, I did those feet in ancient times, walk upon England's whatnot. Yes, Gov, what do you want? Workers of the World Unite. During this time, Chaplin found it hard to have any relationships with women that didn't end in disaster. When he was a music hall entertainer, he satisfied himself with visits to prostitutes. Then, over the next 40 years or so, no matter how much older he got, the ages of women as he went out with them tended to stay the same. In America, he married a teenage actress called Mildred because... I'd always wanted a wife, and she was young and pretty. Then he married the teenage Lita, who became the mother of his first two sons. And after they broke up, Lita took Chaplin to court for not paying maintenance towards the children. Shortly after that, he met and eventually married the actress Paulette Goddard, who was approaching the height of her fame. So he cast her as the leading lady in his 1936 film, Modern Times. He'd become intrigued by the way that modern machines and factory life had enveloped humanity, subjecting people to the rhythms of machinery and destroying individuality. So Modern Times, which he was originally going to call The Masses, the name of an American socialist paper, begins with three images, a huge ticking clock, hundreds of sheep and hundreds of workers shuffling into a factory. The film is about the modern world's attempt to make the common man inhuman. <laughs> Workforce is regarded simply as units, and there's even a search for an automatic feeding machine that would abolish the need for a lunch hour. The tramp meets a girl, played by his wife, and he tries to protect her as she's arrested for stealing bread. From then on, the pair tried to live in defiance of the modern regimented world. Industrialists hated it and tried to have it banned, and the fascist governments of Italy and Germany did ban it, and Goebbels tried to come up with a plan for suing Chaplin. For his next comic target, he chose the subject of fascism. Even in 1915, when he was asked by a reporter if he was Jewish, he'd replied, I have not that good fortune. And he often said he thought he had Jewish blood in him, even though he knew that wasn't true, just to make it clear that he didn't think it was something you ought to be ashamed of. So as soon as the Nazis came to power in Germany, they banned the gold rush and they listed Chaplin in a publication attacking prominent Jews as... The little Jewish tumbler, as disgusting as he is boring. But in 1938, when word got out that he was planning to make an anti-Nazi film, it was Western governments who were amongst the first to be horrified. During the period when they were appeasing Hitler, the secretary of the British Board of Film Censors, a man called J. Brooke Wilkinson, sent a cable to Joe Breen, who was the press officer for the Hollywood Regulation Department, and the letter implied that he wanted Breen to stop the film being released because of... The delicate situation that might arise if personal attacks were made on any living statesman. Breen was never likely to be a fan of the film himself, as he'd once made a speech about Jewish people in Hollywood that went... These Jews are simply a rotten bunch of vile people with no respect for anything beyond the making of money and sexual indulgence. The Great Dictator is about the fascist leader Adenoid Hinkle, fictional ruler of Tumania. And the first we see of Hinkle is when he makes a Nuremberg Rally-style speech in gobbledygook German. Mit Woch. Arbeit Asylum Seeker Stunken. Islamen Stunken. Traveller Caravanen Peiki Stunken. BBC von Stunken. Arbeit Ein Volk Schwieberen das Feinhund. Und Preis again! <laughs> An uncommon side to the great dictator is that Hitler, through Hinkel, is portrayed as a weak character who attacks the Jews because he's personally pathetic and desperate. Ah, world domination.
Meanwhile, a Jewish barber who looks exactly like Hinkel is under siege in the ghetto, and the dramatic conclusion to the film comes when the barber is mistaken for Hinkel and is asked to make a speech at a rally. At this point, Chaplin comes out of character and makes a six-minute speech of his own, during which he condemns not only fascism but all world governments. The film's salesman told him that if he kept the speech in, it could cost him a million dollars in sales, but even though Chaplin financed the film himself, he told him... Well, I don't care if it's five million. I'm going to do it. Are you taking the piss? So the final six-minute speech stayed in, and the Communist Party reprinted the whole thing as a pamphlet. Far-right groups threatened to disrupt the opening of the film with riots, revolver shots at the screen, and stink bombs. Excuse me, I can't see. Oh, so sorry. By the time the film was released, the war in Europe had begun, but America was staying out of it. So Chaplin joined the campaign for America to open a second front against the Nazis. In particular, he spoke at a rally in San Francisco for 40 minutes in which he commended the Russians who were fighting Hitler and he began the speech with the word comrades. From then on, his invites to the New York social scene dried up. His next film got him in even more trouble. Monsieur Verdu was about a banker who was made redundant in the recession and from then on paid for the upkeep for his son and his disabled wife by marrying rich women, murdering them and claiming the insurance. When he's eventually caught and sent to the gallows, he refuses redemption from the priest. And then when a reporter suggests that most people don't do business his way, Verdu replies... Oh, don't they? That's the history of many a big business. One murder makes a villain, millions a hero. Numbers sanctify, my good friend. But as Monsieur Verdu was about to be released, Chaplin was summoned to appear before the House of Un-American Activities Committee. And the film was picketed by members of the Catholic Legion carrying signs that read... Kick the alien out, out, out of out, the country! Out! 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 out Send out, Chaplin out, to Russia! Out. Chaplin replied that the Nazi technique was to begin by condemning the communists. He was a patriot, he said, of the whole world. An editorial in the Los Angeles Herald Express said, What a moral non-entity this chaplain is. Even permitting him to remain in the United States insults the intelligence of the American people. Chaplin